In this lecture, we will talk about the third software development lifecycle model, the iterative development model. So the example for iterative is agile model. This is the most popular model in the industry right now. Once you finish this course, you can go for the agile model. Now, suppose you have a software that you need to implement in three weeks and it has 15 requirements. If you use the agile model, then this is how it will work. The agile model will have three different phases. Each phase will be for one week. Phase one is for the first week, phase two is for the second week and phase three is for the third week. Since we have to complete the project in three weeks, the time has been divided in this way. Now we have 15 requirements. So we decide to develop five requirements in phase one, five in phase two and five in phase three. At the end of the three weeks, we will have all 15 requirements. So why are we doing this in phases? Because we analyze, test and develop the first five requirements, then send it to the customer for feedback. If the customer is unhappy, and if there are any changes to be made in the process, we find out about that in the first phase only. Then we can implement those in the second phase. This is the biggest advantage with the Agile method. You get the customer's feedback from the earliest stage. And in every stage, when you release the software to the customer, it will be fully working. So at the end of phase one, you have five requirements in working stage. But at the end of phase two, you won't be releasing just five requirements to the customer you will be releasing 10 in full working condition. And at the end of phase three, of course, you should have a complete working software that will have all 15 requirements fulfilled. This is how the agile method works. Each phase has define, develop, build, test, and implement. So we can see that live implementation of the software will happen in all the phases. We are repeating the steps in each one. And this is why it is called an iterative development model. You reiterate in every phase. Now, let's go over a few key points that you should remember. Point one, iterative development occurs when groups of features are specified, designed, built, and tested together. So you will have some requirements that will be designed, built, and tested together. In a series of cycles, as you saw, we tested the requirements repeatedly in one phase after another, often of a fixed duration. Like we had a fixed duration of one week for each phase. Now point two, iterations may involve changes to features developed in earlier iterations, along with changes in project scope. So once you developed a feature in phase one, the customer gives feedback on it. If he doesn't like something, then you go to phase two and make the changes he wants in the phase one features as well as the next feature that you're developing. So in this way, you will have a change request as well as a new feature. Point three, each iteration delivers working software, which is a growing subset of the overall set of features until the final software is delivered or development is stopped. So what they're saying is, when we had 15 total requirements, the five requirements we developed in phase one were the subset of the overall set of features. This process only ends when we deliver all 15 requirements in working stage. That's all we need to discuss on this topic. Until the next video, happy testing.